See, if the leader can't be vulnerable, other people on the team are not going to do that. And I've worked with leaders who struggle with this. I worked with a famous guy in the technology world. You've heard of this guy. He was the CEO of a company and he was famous, brilliant, and intelligent and intimidating. Nobody on the team ever disagreed with him, right? It was really, there was no bad news came to him. They never disagreed and never pushed back on him. So the head of, of human resources, God bless her, she went to him and said, listen, nobody's telling you the truth. You need to get them to open up to you more. You need to do something to open up those, that, these relationships. And he didn't really, wasn't into it, but he ag agreed kind of begrudgingly to do 360 feedback, which I don't love 360 feedback. I think there's better ways, but sometimes that's what he, that's all he was willing to do. So we did it. We solicited the forms to everybody on his team. They all gave them back to us. We tabulated the results. My firm did this. We gave him the results and he proceeded to share those results with no one. So the head of HR went to him and said, hey, you got to show people what you, what you learned about yourself. And he said, okay, I'll do it at the next staff meeting. So at the next staff meeting, he stood up in front of the team with his, uh, with his report that had my picture on it because I put my picture on everything. <laughs> and and, and, and he, he allowed me to observe the meeting since I administered the tool. So I was sitting back here off to the side on a little chair that had wheels on the bottom of it, which will become relevant here in just a second. And, <laughs> and he stands up and he says, okay, it says here I'm not a very good listener. Huh. What do you guys think? And this actually happened. And I remember it because when I saw it, most of my books are fiction. I said, well, I couldn't put that on a book because nobody would believe it. They went around that table and said, oh, I think you're a good listener. I do too. I think you're a fine listener. I think you're a good listener. Good. Yeah, yeah, you too. And he was like, okay, good. And I'm sitting there on my chair thinking, oh, I can't believe this. And he says, so the next one says, I don't give enough praise or enough feedback. Huh? I thought I'd gotten better at this. What do you guys think? Oh, I think you've, you're great. I think you've gotten a lot better. I don't have a problem with it. I think you're better than last guy. All, all around the table. I'm sitting there on my little chair thinking if I have any integrity as a consultant, this was my first big client. If I have any integrity as a consultant, this is where I have to lose a client or put one in jeopardy, right? And it's easy to say now, but at the time I was like, oh no. So I got on my little chair and I was like, eek, 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 eek. And I scoochied up right next to the CEO. I'm like, um, excuse me, but you're the only people who filled this out. So... <laughs> Somebody in here had to write this stuff. <laughs> and it, that's a true story. And it was suddenly very quiet. And, and nobody said anything. And finally, poor guy, the head of marketing raised his hand. And, and there you go, head of marketing. And, he's, and, and, and he was like, well, I, um, I, I'd like to get, I mean, my team would like to get more feedback from you. And... Um, they only hear from you when, when something goes bad and if they screw up. I think it would be nice if you actually told them if they did something well. I, I think that's an area you could improve on. I put that in my, in my report. Silence. <laughs> Until the head lawyer goes, not me. I think you give plenty of feedback. I don't understand. <laughs> and everybody's yeah, we don't get it. I don't know what he's talking about. They just killed the guy. <laughs> the moral of this story is this. So that's the day that CEO lost all credibility. And most importantly, sent a message to his team, don't be vulnerable. I'm not going to be vulnerable. Because he stood up there like the friggin' emperor with no clothes with his big old butt hanging out. How do I look, guys? They're like, you look fine, boss. <laughs> and it's like... More importantly, all he had to do, all he had to do was say, hey, you guys, I know I'm not great at these things. And, uh, and um, I... Uh, I know I've had this in performance reviews throughout my career. My wife tells me once a week or so that I'm bad at this. And so I know I'm not great at it. I'll give it a shot. I'll try to get better. I want to acknowledge it in front of you. Now, what about you guys? What's yours? He didn't do that. So everybody said, don't admit you have a problem in front of the CEO. Within a few years, that company was sold for a fraction of its worth, really damaged an entire regional economy. Thousands of jobs and families affected. What did the Wall Street Journal say? Oh, they had some strategic problems. They made some technical, tactical errors. Of course they did, but those were downstream symptoms of the problem, and that was there was no trust on the executive team. There was nothing that they would, would, were talking about realistically, so it was inevitable they were going to have those things, but the forensic analysis didn't go far enough. It was because the leader of the team couldn't say, I don't know, I need help. 